our Reverend Emmanuel Nyandi. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. 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 Our God is good. And all the time. Jesus is good. And all the time. He is indeed good. Amen. Just look into a neighbor's face and say that you look very handsome or beautiful if it's a lady. Amen. Just let somebody feel good. Let somebody feel good. Let somebody feel good. Let somebody feel good. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. If anybody does not tell you how good you are, he's a suspect. Amen. Amen. You need to tell somebody, you look very, very good today. Father, we glorify your name. Amen. Father, we thank you, we bless your name. And we give you all the reverence, Lord, because you are worthy of it. We thank you and we glorify your name this hour, God. Our prayer is that, Lord, you will, Father, take charge and that you will let your spirit speak to us, O God. Let your name only be glorified as we pray, Almighty God, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary you're alone, tried and true, Ooh, with a steady I'll be a leader, set
And it is so good that in this month, as it is the, la uh, the last but one month, the eleventh month, you have chosen to be in the presence of God for the very first Sunday. Hallelujah. Yeah. Glory to God in the highest. Amen. Amen. You see, there is one thing that if we prioritize God, He also prioritizes us. That's right. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Someone did not hear that very well. I say God is a God that when you prioritize him, he also prioritizes you. That's right. Because his word says, if you honor me, I will honor you. you. Hallelujah. Amen. You see, the kind of God that we serve, there are times that we will be screaming and calling out to God, and it appears his ears are deaf, that he can't actually hear us. But the thing is that he is the kind of God that if you give due diligence to him, he also meets your call. Hallelujah. Amen. I've heard of a parent before who said that his children, he says he doesn't want to actually be a sort of a dad that discriminates between the children. But he says that when he is downstairs and he hears somebody falling off the stairs, and when he hears one of the sons, he would just sit there and say, what's happening? But one particular son, when he hears the he voice falling down the stairs, he runs to that particular child. And I said, Dad, I said, Dad, that is not good. But he says, of all my children, they are the ones that actually reverence me. And they are on my heart. God is not a God of partialities. But he honors those who honor him. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So if you are not a type who prioritize God, I have an announcement for you. You will receive a befitting response. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. May that not be anybody's portion in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 And God bless you so much for your time on Facebook. And as we are going through this 11th hour breakthrough prayers, and uh, it is so interesting. It is so interesting. Just yesterday, I had another message from a man in uh, Ethiopia. Oh, hallelujah. It is, it is so interesting to see that um, uh, it appears this little thing that we are doing in, uh, on, on Facebook, that it has actually gone beyond the borders of the United Kingdom. Hallelujah. Uh, that there was... Even a pastor who says he's been watching for a long time and um, if you cannot come to our place, he is in Kenya, and if you cannot come, we want to organize an online program that you can speak to the church. And beloved in the Lord, it is so remarkable to see that people, even from outside, from Pakistan and other places, are hearing the word of God and are witnessing what God is able to do. And they are witnessing the power of God. And I pray that as you and I also take these things seriously, we will also reap a harvest. But I pray that there will be a harvest that you cannot even collect. Hallelujah. Yeah. There will be a great harvest and people have started seeing it even in their lives. There will be transformation. And as you prioritize God, He will prioritize you. That is the word from God for you. Amen. Amen. But today, we have a very, very special day in a sense that we are also going to dine with the Lord. And uh, we will begin, before even the word of God even comes, we would like to also begin. And please, if you can be on your feet, that would be very helpful as we come even to dine with the Lord. And this is biblical. This is very, very important. Something that we do, and then it actually helps us. And it causes us to reflect. It causes us also to prioritize God. And in a month like this, the Lord God expects us also to remember Him for what He did for us. Can we please be on our feet? Can we be on our feet? Hallelujah. Amen.
And in this manner, begin to just pray and just thank God for the opportunity even to die with him. Begin to just thank God. Begin to just thank God. Begin to just thank God. In the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We thank you and we bless your name. We give you all praise and adoration. Glory be to your name, mighty God, for today. Thank you, Lord Jesus, O oh Lord. Father, for the confirming, O oh God, Father, of the blood, O oh God, in us. Father, for your body that was broken for us, O oh Lord. We remember your sacrifice on the cross of Calvary. And how, O oh God, you redeemed us from the grip of the enemy. How you broke, O oh God, Father, Lord, the devil's grip on us. How you disarmed principalities and powers, O oh God. We stand as free, people, O oh God. We stand as free from any power of darkness. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for your work on the cross. To you be glory, honor, and adoration. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Please take your seats in the presence of the living God as we share this short word. Amen. Amen. We thank God. Please open your Bibles with me, with me to the book of John and then the chapter 12, please. The book of John and the chapter 12. John chapter 12. If you are there, say hallelujah. Wow. And if you are not there by now, say God help me. You cannot miss John. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and you are there. Are you there? Yes. Glory to God in the highest. That is John chapter 12, and I read the verse 9 to 11. Now a great many of the Jews knew that he was there, and they came not for Jesus' sake only, but that they might also see Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. But the chief priest plotted to, keep, to put Lazarus to death also, because on account of him, many of the Jews went away and believed in Jesus. Can I go over that again? John 12 and the verses 9 to 11. Now a great many of the Jews knew that he, Jesus, was there. And they came not for Jesus' sake only, but that they might also see Lazarus whom Jesus had raised from the dead. But the chief priest plotted to put Lazarus to death also, because on account of him, Lazarus, many of the Jews went away and believed in Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. How interesting it is it. We read of Lazarus and how Jesus had raised him from the dead. The man had been dead for four days and Jesus comes around and then he restores life, life into his mortal body. From then on, Lazarus began to follow Jesus. From then on, Lazarus became a disciple of Jesus. And wherever that Jesus went, he also followed. Because when you read the earlier verses of chapter 12, you realize that Lazarus was there even at a table with Jesus eating. But Jesus was not stagnant and then he kept moving to city to city, towns to towns, to spread the salvation of mankind. And uh, as he moved, Lazarus also moved. But as it was the order of the day, and because of the many miracles that Jesus does, when he moves, crowd follow. And some of the crowd were the chief priests and the Pharisees. They also moved 
as Jesus moved, they also joined the crowd. In the crowd, you will find people who, are, who have come to believe in Jesus as the Son of God. In the crowd, you will find people who believe Jesus as a prophet of God. In the crowd, you will also find people who are following Jesus for the miracle's sake. Hallelujah. Amen. And I dare not say that in the crowd were people who were waiting for another time for a feeding of the 5,000. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. What is your purpose of following Christ Jesus? Why are you here in the first place? What drives you from your house, even when it is so much raining? What is the force that moves you to come here? That is a personal reflection. But what we read here was that in the crowd of many people were some of the Jews that have come to believe in Christ Jesus and some also of the Jews who were threatened by Jesus' work. To them, they were the ones that, was, that were supposed to have the reverence from the people. The Jews lifted themselves up and then they are the ones that were recognized as very religious and very spiritual. The chief priests were the people that when, uh, when they are walking, that they see the ordinary citizens, they bowed to them. And Jesus came on the scene. And when Jesus came on the scene, the tables turned. Many people began to follow Jesus. I'm not Jesus. Were inspired by Jesus. Jesus became, became the role model contrary to the expectations of the Jews who believed that Jesus was not a son of God, or neither was he a true prophet of God. So, among the crowd are people that also despised and hated Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Can I give you an announcement? When there are miracles, when you are succeeding, and when there are breakthroughs, be careful of the crowd. Hallelujah. Amen. Not all the crowd that are gathered are in for your good. Right. When something miraculous has happened to you, when you are experiencing a life-changing situation, bear in mind that not all the people that are gathered are really for you. Some wish that you were dead. You see, what was happening here, as the Bible says that, the Jews were following Jesus. And when they followed, they saw that Lazarus was also following. But you would have thought that some of the Jews were coming to see Lazarus. Why? Because this was the man that Jesus raised from the dead. And it would inspire people to see that such people were there. Lazarus was the testimony that God is able to raise the dead. Hallelujah. Amen. Lazarus was the evidence that Jesus can raise people from the dead. And can I announce, announce to you that as believers, we are the evidence that Christ Jesus liveth. Amen. You see, if we do not have testimonies of what God is able to do for us, the world cannot believe that there is any power in Jesus. So Lazarus, like you and I, stand as evidence that Jesus has the power to change life, to bring the dead back to life. And I am praying that you will begin to pray the prayer of the Lord that may I be the evidence. Amen. Amen. There was a time that Jesus had healed a blind man. The Bible said that he was born blind. He lived in a community. 
That was in John chapter 9. He lived in a community and everybody knew that this man is blind. But he encountered Jesus and there was a change. He encountered Jesus and things changed. He now can see. And the same crowd came and disputed. Not that they do not see that the man has had healing. But the person from whom the healing came from, they despised. So they decided to dis dispute the healing power. Because to them, Jesus is not the Son of God. To them, they will want to see Jesus fall. So that they will say that they are the only true religious people that the crowd can follow. So when they disputed it, they called the mother of the man. And the, ma the mother said, and I give birth to this man. And he was born blind. The community knows. How he had his healing, I do not know. But all I can say is that I know my son was blind, but now he can see. So the evidence was there, and you cannot dispute it. Beloved the Lord, it is about time that believers of today begin to be the evidence. You see, when you are speaking to people about Christ Jesus, when you are witnessing to people about Christ Jesus, and there is no evidence, all that you say becomes like a newspaper that people just read, a story that people have seen. But if somebody knew me for some time ago, when I lay on a sick bed, when doctors say that it is, it is not possible for him to have life. And then today, they see me standing here. I dare not say anything from my mouth. The evidence speaks. Yes. Hallelujah. I am praying for a community of Christians that are evidence to the world that Jesus is alive. Amen. And Jesus lives. That's right. That Jesus can transform lives. Amen. But unfortunately, no many are evidence. Mm -hmm. In your life, in your attitude, in your reaction, are they evidence? It is evident that Jesus has touched your heart. Yes. Is it evident that Jesus has transformed you? Can somebody say to you, I knew this man some time ago, but I know something has happened to him. He is not the same way. She is not the same way. Something has happened to him. And when you say that it is Christ Jesus, the people can see the evidence of God in you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So Lazarus was the evidence that Christ Jesus can raise the dead. And as Lazarus walked, the people decided to attack him. Do you know what? The attack was meant for Jesus. Because initially, when Lazarus had not died, there's people still hated Jesus and they had wanted to kill Jesus. But how can they do that when Jesus was surrounded by many people? The only way they can do that is to cause people to disprove Jesus. So Lazarus standing as an evidence, as evidence that Jesus can raise the dead, they decided to try and kill Lazarus. You see, that is why when you come to God and you are the evidence, you need to pray like never before. When a miracle has taken place, because in the world as we are today, there are many that dispute the God that you and I serve. And then the only way they can bring that ideology down and that spirituality down is to destroy the evidence. Hence, your attack. Lazarus was attacked because by him, people were believing Jesus. Because of your testimony, because of your healing, people have started to believe that Jesus can heal. And people that hated Jesus will try to make sure that you do not leave in order to tell your story one day. 
And that was what's happening to Lazarus. The Bible says that the people came not only for Jesus' sake, but also for Lazarus. And then for Lazarus, they came that they will actually eliminate the evidence that Jesus heals. And believe, beloved in the Lord, this is the warfare that we fight. If somebody wants to find out why the attacks, why am I going through this? And why am I going through that? Because you are now an ambassador. A clear indication that God is able to transform a life. God is able to change a life. And that for them that are against Jesus, for Satan who wants to disprove Jesus, for Satan who wants to bring Jesus down, he targets the evidence. And guess who is the evidence? It is you. And that is why it is so important that in our time, when we call prayers, beloved in the Lord, know that because you are the evidence. And that is why the attack is coming upon you. This is to encourage you to actually pray and never faint. This is to encourage you so that you will know the reason of the attack. Such that you will know why you are going through the things that you are going through. You will compare yourself to somebody who is not a believer. Why is it that when I became a believer, why is it that when I received my miracle, hell broke loose? And it's all because you stand as the evidence of the power of Jesus. So any attack on Jesus comes on the people that stand as evidence. That was Lazarus' problem. That they were seeking to kill Jesus. But why Lazarus? What has he done? By him, the Bible says, many were believing in Jesus. So to cut off the belief in Jesus is to kill Lazarus. But I pray that you will have victory over your enemies. And you have victory over those who attack you. That you have victory upon those who wish you that wish well for you. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ for you that for every miracle that you are receiving and for every life transforming situation in your life that when the enemy rise that the Lord will be your defender. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. This particular afternoon understand the reason for the attack. Understand the reason for the fight. Because if you do not understand the reason, you cannot fight and fight well. As long as you live, the Lord will show you favor. As long as you live, the Lord will show you his mercy. As long as you are under the shadow of the Almighty, as long as you still remain the true servant of the living God, favor will come your way. Open doors will come your way. Blessings will come your way. But so it is that when these things come your way, because you have now become the evidence of God bestowing favor. Expect these things. Expect it. Somebody say that maybe that is not a good, a, 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 a good expectation. But you see, if you are at the war front, you should expect to be hit. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, if you live in a glass house, they say, do not throw stone. And if you can't take blows, do not throw blows. If you are in God, in Christ, and the evidence of God is upon you, expect it. But also know that your God is able to deliver you. Lazarus did not die because his enemies were upon him. Elijah did not die because uh, uh, what, what is it what is it? Jezebel had power over him. On the contrary, Jezebel died before Elijah could die. Amen. And that is why you have to be encouraged that for everything that is happening to you, you have a defender. Amen. That's right. But the reason for the fight is necessary. That you have understanding why you are fighting. Mm. 
You don't jump in a fight without knowing what is going on. The fact that you went and you saw people fighting and quarreling among the, the other, you don't just don't go and just join. Find out the reason why. And probably some fights are not worth fighting. But because you are the evidence of the power of Christ Jesus yes, upon Lord. people, yes. and the fight will never will never cease. Listen, the fight will never cease. I, I, I'm sorry that I can't announce this good news to you. That the fight will never cease. The attacks will continue to come. As long as you are receiving the blessings of God. As long as you are receiving the favor of God. As long as God is continuing to heal you. Contrary to their expectation that that sickness would have killed you. Contrary to their expectation that that sickness could have ended your life. As long as you are living, showing the evidence that God sustains you. Expect it. It will definitely come. It will definitely come. People walk even into churches even to test the spirit that are there. Mm. Preaching. Some people can walk into your life and then because of the evidence they have seen, they will challenge you. Mm. And we are living in such time that challenges will come. The Christian is not a soft-headed person. The Christian is not a snowflake Christian. No. The Christian is a toughened up person who knows the times. Yes, who knows the fight he's yes, fighting. Yes. And will stand to the feet yes, and Lord. fight no matter, the, no matter the consequences. Because he has a God that can never fail. Yes, Lord. Beloved the Lord, that is the reason for their time. So do not be perturbed. Thank you, Jesus. When you see people rise, especially if you are in Christ Jesus and have seen the evidence, you would have thought the friends would have celebrated with you when you had your miracle. You would have thought that they would actually just, just be happy for you. But the idea was to eliminate the evidence to get back at Jesus. Simply what Satan is doing. He attacks the believer because he knows he can attack Christ. So the believers suffer their talents. And then the idea is to get to Jesus. But this particular afternoon, I encourage you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Tough times are coming. Very hard times are coming. These are the times that the Bible says the just shall live by faith. Times are coming that will be very hard. But it is only them that stand strong. Because you will now be the evidence. Jesus says, for my, for my sake, you will be persecuted. For my sake, you will be arrested. For my sake, they will even kill you and put a knife to your throat. And he says, be of good cheer. Yes. Oh, hallelujah. Yes. He said, be of good cheer. Yes, because I have overcome the world. And you will also overcome. This particular afternoon, if you are going home, go as strong, knowing that you are the evidence of the miracle of God. Amen. I am the evidence that God lives. Yes, I am the evidence of the healing power of God. I am the evidence of the wisdom of God. I am the evidence of the favor of God. You see, people that were looking at you in some way, tell them, I am the evidence. You need to come so that yes, you can Lord. be an evidence. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. It's about time you tell your friends that as you see today, I am the evidence that I can break away yes, even Lord. from your company and still live a life. Yes. For people thought that because they are around you, they are the source of your blessings. So when you moved away from them, their expectations is that you will die. The expectations is that it will not be well of you. But today you are saying that because unto Jesus I stand as evidence and then my defender is able to defend me. Hallelujah. It is as simple as that. Yes, that as you go out today say to yourself I'm the evidence. Hallelujah. You see and it will protect you so much. Mm. When the enemy tempts you to go back into the world remember, look up I'm the evidence yes. of God's arm. Right. I don't need to defile myself. Hallelujah. I'm the evidence. That's when right. they provoke you to anger and you want to really get back at them, they want you to now spoil the evidence that 
that they will get back to God. After so many years in church, they will say, look at him, look at her. Then there is no evidence. But when they come, tell them, remember, I am the evidence. Hallelujah. Contrary to your expectations, I am the evidence of calmness. I am the evidence of patience. Therefore, I will not be overcome by anger. I will not be overcome by, by anything that will cause you to have a go at my God. Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. That is all there is to about Lazarus. And I pray that this day will mark a new chapter in your life. Yes, when you go out, every situation that comes, when it is bubbling up and you see it bubbling, remember, just remember, go back to Lazarus. Say, oh, the idea is to eliminate what? The evidence. So that they will get back at Jesus. But I will not allow it. For I still stand as the evidence of God. May the Lord God be with you. And may he cause his grace to be upon you. May he establish you. And may his favor be upon you. May you grow. Contrary to the expectations of your enemies. May you materialize. Into a good personality. May the Lord God force you. To influence your environment because of the evidence that he has made in you. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary of your and Try to